And I have a way of reaching people, a lot of people, to pull them in so that they can listen and learn and understand the reality of what's going on here. You see, Dowell is afraid of being caught. He's afraid of being seen. But what about Eric? What about how he feels? What about his family? What about his children? Because we witness the testimony of Eric. And it's very clear what happened. He was kicked out of straightway. Not only kicked out, but he was threatened never to come back. That's right. They wanted the community to believe that he abandoned his woman, abandoned his children. But it's all a lie. And also, even if he did, even if he abandoned his wife, why is Dowell with his wife? How you doing, babe? Okay. Babe, am I uh, an oppressive man? No, sir. Look at her. She's over there. Just Jesus. I'm going to make you show everybody what you just got for this <laughs> Oppressing man. Am I, um, come on, as a man, tell everybody um, the truth. Tell everybody, because you know lies go to hell. Tell everybody, <laughs> to, lies go to hell. So tell everybody the truth of the type of man that Pastor Dow is, the type of husband, the type of um, man of Yah that Pastor Dow is. Well, Eyewitness. Go ahead. As a husband, attentive. Mm very attentive to detail Ooh. with me mm. and um, just very mindful of me in every way um, very loving always helping me in my spiritual growth um, and when correction has to come it's always with such love and compassion like even that feels like it's done with such righteousness and truth. Like to me, everything about you is pure. Come over here for a second. Like and a lot of you just threw your head covering on too under his car, take it off of you. Um you know he likes to do yeah, that. Come on. His um We gotta come over here so we can see you. Okay. Go ahead. Well, since I've been with you, I've noticed just you being just very like I've always described your love as pure, just a very sincere, pure love, the kind of love that you can feel secure and safe in, um, regardless of what's going on in our lives. I just know that I'm always going to be taken care of. I'm always going to be well. And that brings me a lot of peace to me. And I know it's, it's something that we women desire is to have that peace, that joy, uh, that comfort, that security blanket on us, knowing that we are provided for, taken care of. I lack nothing at all. Like, I don't what care you what it about, is. Willis? It's provided for. Um, much love is given. Um, like I say, you're just very attentive. And that's something that I'm just blessed with. And I, I think that, you know, even when you are author authoritative and you are a man of power, you, you walk around you know just showing that you are a true man it just it's still like to me like i say it's just beautiful it's sexy it's and how in the hell can somebody who young i'm probably old enough to be his daddy how in the hell are he gonna say how are you gonna how is he gonna rebuke me you know what? Uh, you know what? Not even in it. Yo, yo, voice, your word. Not, it don't even. If you believe Ringo TV, you take that shit and stuff that right. Well, you know you can stuff it. In. But this is what happens when you don't have. You ain't under no structure. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai Bahashem, Recha Ha Kodash, and double honors to the elder apostles and bishops of Great Millstone. Salute and honors to your other elders, brethren. And all of you that make up the supporting cast of the body, that includes your few sisters as well. And Shalom to the elect. So anyway, I saw a clip on Elder Apostle Tahar's page about Ringo TV and this Pastor Dow, right? Which I've did videos off of Ringo TV in the past. And uh, he exposes a lot of those pastors and preachers, right? And, you know, he does a good job at it. I mean, he said the most high has him in that lot. And 
that's absolutely true. He's in that lot. But I want to do a response off of this because of uh, Pastor Dial said that a young man can't rebuke him. He's old enough to be his father. So that would be the excuse. See, these same old wicked Pharisees are back today doing the same damn thing, right? Cuckolding and stealing men's wives, right? And then saying you can't rebuke them. So when you're going into history, there was a, you had to go on two or more as a witness to do the rebuking because you had a lot of false accusations, right? So it had to be somebody else there to uh, be a witness to the false accusation. This is why when you go into the story of Susanna, when Sus Susanna, as they call it, so-called black male, I call it white male, whatever you want to call it. Black is a negative word. So she got blackmailed, I guess, by the head priest or whatever. They were older men, right? But Daniel came as a young man as well and saved the day. You see, you can't sit up there and commit these kind of acts and then tell somebody they can't rebuke you according to their age. That is ridiculous. You can't commit adultery and then somebody say, you know, you committed adultery. Well, it's enough witnesses. This man, Ringo TV, isn't the first time this came out. He's responding off of other witnesses of this defiled act, right? So let's go to Jeremiah to clear that up real quick. Jeremiah 23 and 1. Woe be unto you pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pastor, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, against the pastors that feed my people, Ye have scattered my flock and driven them away. And you would drive them away and take their wives. Now, you know why this woman is all such in love now? She loves power, right? She loves the power. She loves, as the elder apostle Tahar brought out as well, those women love the power, Apostle Gabar and Apostle Rumlov, all the apostles recall, all the apostles, elders, and brothers that brought this out many years ago, right? And we can see that. They love the power. And this is why it's not a good idea to have these churches and these women, you know, all in there. Because women, you know, they can be a weakness, right? Women, women can be a weakness and a distraction when you're dealing with these uh, situations. They can be a hindrance to your walk, Right? Especially when you get some beautiful women that you're attracted to. And that's what women were made for. So this man, Pastor Dow, let me get another scripture real quick. Jeremiah 1 and 6. Then said I, uh, Lord. Then said I, uh, Lord God. Behold, I cannot speak, for I am a child. <clears throat> right? And verse 7 says, But the Lord said unto me, Say not, I am a child, for thou shalt go to all that I shall send thee, and whatsoever I shall command thee, thou shalt speak. Be not afraid of their faces, for I am with thee to deliver thee, thee saith the Lord. So the Lord can use a young man, an older man, an animal, whatever he wants to get his message across. Who are you? You know, especially in the act of adultery. Now, we're not just... These people were just jumping on board just to try to come against Pastor Dow. We're calling out the wickedness, okay, and the evil that this man is uh, portraying, that's putting out there, right? Let's go to, I want to go to another scripture real quick. With this man, he's a proud boaster. Let's go to Sirach 1 and 30. Exalt not thyself lest thy fall. He's telling this woman to tell everybody who he is. If everybody don't know who you are by now, that this proves more guilt. If you got to stand up there and tell somebody boast in your cause, right? Like you in court, the, the, the lawyer, the judge stand up. I mean, the, the lawyer stands up. He was a good citizen of society. He was a great man. He's got honors in academics. You know, he's a great scholar. But then you heard he didn't molest it, you know, under molestation. All them good words ain't going to do a damn thing. 
because the judge still going to look at it the same way. That's a heap, you know, a heap and a call. Right? That's a Hail Mary for the people not to see the guilt. Right? Exalt not thyself lest I fall and bring dishonor upon thy soul. And so Yahweh discover thy secrets, God discover thy secrets, and cast thee down in the midst of the congregation, because thou camest not in truth to fear of the Lord, and fear of the Lord, but uh, but thy heart is full of deceit. And that's this guy. So we're going to go into the adultery and the things that he said according to adultery, right? Let's go to Titus 1 and 7. I'm just trying to cover it all. It says, For a bishop must be blameless and a steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given too much wine, nor a striker, or given filthy lucre, right? That's what a man of the Lord is supposed to be, right? But we're going to go into, let's see, uh, 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3 and 2. It says, a bishop must be blameless. Now, he's the leader of that congregation, right? The husband of one wife, and I've done videos on that, that absolutely has nothing to do with one particular single wife. The husband of one wife is exactly what you see going on in this church. The only way a bishop would be blameless if he would keep the wife that he had because the people in the church was passing the women around. And what would happen is, these bishops would marry these women who already been married to several other men. They had already had five husbands. And to prove me wrong, when Yahawashah, the one you call Jesus, went to the woman at the well, he said, you had five husbands. If polygamy was so much the, the case, why didn't Jesus, the Most High, send his son to go to, go to preach to the people and why didn't Yahawashah tell, the one you call Jesus, tell certain men, you have five wives. You're only supposed to have one wife. You never heard Yahawashah say that. But in this situation, you had so much adultery going on in the church. He was telling them, and there was the leaders of those churches. And those bishops had many wives, by the way. You can look that up. They wasn't to take on any more of those women because those women were already married to other other men and it also went into the fact of it was a greek tradition so to speak if a bishop wife died he wasn't supposed to remarry they was following all kind of different traditions or whatever so didn't he say the husband must be blameless the husband of, of one wife so now you got the men in the church you got this bishop or i mean you got this pastor Dow. He's got a wife that doesn't even belong to him. He's just passing them around. That is the reason why I brought the scripture out because that what was happening in the church of Corinthians. They were doing the same damn thing. They were passing the woman around. Now we're gonna go into he was I didn't put it all up, but this Pastor Dow was going into the fact that how um, the women. They're not righteous. They're not calling their men masters and things like that. Well, that's between you and your woman if that's what you want her to do. But these big occultic groups like this, for what I understand, all the women got to call him master. For what I understand, or their husbands, I don't know. But it's some weird stuff going on, man. Let's go to 1 Corinthians 7. It says, 7 and 10. And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord. Let not the wife depart from her husband, but, and it, it says, but, and if she depart, let her remain unmarried. There was a reason for that. Because when you go on in that time and that stuff was happening and they would have issues and break up, you know what the woman would do? She would move up to the next guy. The most, the more powerful guy, the, the speaker, the great orator. That's who women gravitate to. This is why you should never have your woman in those Passovers and you have, uh, what's his name? Elder Rakah Hashiyah, which we used to call him formerly Bubble Eyes. 
of the GOCC doing Michael Jackson spin moves and a woman dancing and cheering and they're clapping. You got to understand one thing. When you bring your woman into these schools, she's looking at somebody else. I don't give a damn if she's talking about she's a great Israelite woman. And I guarantee it. She ain't going to tell you. But her eyes are set. If you ain't that top guy, if you ain't like first, second, or third, fourth top guy, you better know what's coming. She waiting for the opportunity. And you know what happened? Pastor Dow, Mr. Cuckold Prophet, he enjoyed it. The reason why I called it Cuckold, right? Let's look that up, right? It says a Cuckold is a man whose wife is having an affair with another man. That's really what it means. They got all that other stuff where the man sitting there looking at his wife or whatever. But that's what it means. That's why I put that in there. He enjoys, but what this also, cuckold also goes into, he enjoys the power of controlling a woman, another man's woman. That's what he enjoys. He enjoys this stuff, man. And this is why he has her sitting up there stating how great he is. He's really doing this to boast this over the, uh, the Jake who wife it with who wife uh, uh, husband, you know, this, this he's really boasting over this uh, this man, this wife's old husband. It makes him feel good. He wants more power and control. He's sick. He's got a mental sexual fetish. And you know what happened? Mr. Pastor Dow did some extracurricular things to this woman. She was already connected in the brain like the pimps, right? Because first you get the mind, right? You get the spirit, and then you get the body. You know, then you got the soul. It's all a connection. You get the mind, the body, and the soul, as they say. Now, once he did that, and he put all this extra hard work in, breaking his back, she fell in love. So not only he's got this gun in the back, you know, he's he's showing himself to have all this power. She feels protected. She feels safe. She feels loved. That's what the scripture says, such the way of an adulterous woman. She eateth and wipeth her mouth and said, I've done no wickedness. I believe Proverbs 30 says that. Let's go on down. First Corinthians 7 and 10. And, I, and, and unto the married woman I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not his wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband and let them not, and let not the husband put away his wife. This man is putting away the man's wife, right? But to, to the rest, I speak, I, not the Lord. Now, when he says, I, not the Lord, it has nothing to do with against Yahweh and Yahweh Shah. It was talking to, against those Pharisees who was boasting about certain things about what a man should do and because they were saying if she's an unbelieving woman you got to get rid of her or unbelieving husband you got to get rid of her because going back to the law but Yahweh came right and gave us the mercy and grace which means at this point we didn't know so we are messed up people so we need grace and mercy to fix us this is why he said if the unbelieving wife does not want to uh, be believed anymore She's still connected to that husband. So, and the reason why this was happening is I read in 1 Timothy because of the adultery. It was the adultery. If somebody said, I don't believe anymore, I'm going to go mess with this man. I'm going to mess with that man. And these unbelieving was these women who was unbelieving to their own husbands. Right? Or these men were coming to the synagogues or the churches and then they, they would have wives that was following another practice. And then what you know what they were doing? They were telling the wives, once you convert it, you got to get rid of the wife. That's what they were doing. I believe IUIC teaches that too. That wickedness. So anyway, that's to the point. Let's go to Proverbs um, 9 and 13. Uh, a foolish woman is calamitous. She's simple and knoweth nothing. Yeah. For she sitteth at the door of her house on seat in the high place of the city. Now, this woman, she knew what she was doing. 
let's not all get caught up that, you know, this is all Pastor Dow. Yeah, it is because he's the stronger flesh. She's the weaker vessel. But she must have had her eyes fixed on him for a long time and she just couldn't wait. She was sitting in that seat, shaking her legs, getting hot. She needed that opportunity. And when that opportunity came, she took it, right? See, a lot of you Jakes think you in control of the situation or the narrative. These women will set up the narrative to make you feel like you're in control and your ass ain't in no control. That was her whole plan from the beginning. And then you know what's going to happen? You know, they have old saying, if a dog will bring a bone, he'll carry one. The next man she liked, and it could be of another religion or belief, she's going to drop his ass and go there too, man. Whosoever is simple, whoever is simple, let him turn in hither. And as for him, that want of understanding, she said to him, stolen waters are sweet, right? Going into wisdom, right? Stolen women are sweet. I mean, stolen women, stolen waters are sweet. This man stealing women is shit. Stolen waters are sweet, and bread eaten in secret is pleasant. So this is going on, and then the call came out, and they had to go up and do another video. It says, but he knoweth not. This is for straightway, but he knoweth not that the dead are there, and that her guests are in the depth of hell. You guys at Straightway, you people at Straightway, you're going to figure it out. Some of you, some of you won't, right? But this man wants to be praised, right? Proverbs 27 and 2 says, let another man praise thee and not thine own mouth, a stranger and not thy own lips. This is what he does. He get this woman up there to praise him. That's what he does. We've been telling you that this guy's been a false prophet for many years. I don't even think he believes in the New Testament, but he's quoting it, so I don't know. This is why it's important to have the New Testament because the New Testament is what bears the grace and mercy and the sacrifice of Yahweh Shah. Anyway, I think I covered it all as much as I could. That's all I have on that Shalom.